let's look at this problem. If the sum of the first five terms of an of a, a geometric sequence, so the keyword is geometric sequence here, is 781 and the sum to infinity is 1024, after how many terms is the sum greater than 1000? So I worked this out, this is a lengthy problem. So let me first explain what is a geometric sequence. So I made up a geometric sequence. This is called a geometric sequence. Or if you look at the numbers 10, 5, 2.5, 1.5, you can see this is decreasing by, this is half of this. So if you multiply, or if you divide 5 by 10, it is 0.5. I hope you understand. 5 divided by 10 is 1 half, which is 0.5. Or 10 times 0.5 gives you uh, 5. And 5 times 0.5. So let me show you that first. Okay, so this is my calculator. So if you go 10 times 0.5 gives you 5. And times it by 0.5 you get 2.5. This type of sequence is called a geometric sequence. Again, the same pattern, 0.5. Okay, so we can say when the ratio between consecutive terms is constant, that's when you call a geometric sequence. So what do I mean? Suppose if you go 5 divided by 10, this is the ratio between consecutive terms, which is uh, 0.5. So if you go 2.5 divided by 5, 2.5 divided by 5 is same as 25 over 50. And 25 over 50 is half, which is 0.5. I hope you understand that. So this type of sequence where you've got a common ratio, that's called a geometric sequence. Okay. So now we are, let me explain what is the sum and sum of terms and sum to infinity mean. So, so what happens, suppose if S1 means you add the first term. So S1 is 10, S2 means it is 10 plus 5, you add the first two terms, which is 15. S3 means you add the first three terms, okay, that is 10 plus 5 plus 2.5 and so on. And S4 is you add this, you get this, and so on, okay. S5. Okay, now you, I use Excel, so let me go to the sheet to explain what, how, how did I get this. So this is the first term, this is a serial number, this is 10, 5, 2.5. So what I've done is I've used Excel, what I did was to show you this formula. So this is B2, this is B2, B2 divided by 2. Okay, now this is B3 divided by 3, so this is the sequence that I was talking about. And here, this is the sum of n terms. So what I again use Excel. So what I did was here, is this cell I get by adding this and this. That is C2 plus B2. And then this cell is, can you see this? This is this plus this. That is C3 plus B3. Sorry, it is C3 plus B4 and so on. So can you see, this is uh, this is your S1, this is S2, this is S3, this is S4, and so on. So if you keep on adding, I have used Excel, it'll, when you go to infinity, it will become 20. Okay, so, so that's what, so if you go S7, and so on, and when you reach, even if you go to S33, so let me show you that even before infinity, by, by the time you reach 33, can you see by the time you reach even 32 or 33, you are approaching 20. This, as this becomes, this is going to become smaller and smaller. This is almost approaching zero. So basically what happens is, as this approaches, as this becomes, let me go back. So this is going to become, as you approach infinity, this number is going to become approach zero. So if you approach infinity, you are going to approach a number. So S infinity is 20. So this is without knowledge of any formulas. Yes, just use Excel to get this answer. But this are, these are the two formulas that we need to remember. <coughs> Excuse me. 
s infinity is a divided by 1 minus r where a is your first term a is called the, the first term and r is the common ratio r stands for the common ratio this is the common ratio r stands for the ratio in this example our a is 10 your a is 10 and the common ratio is 0 0.5 okay so using that formula you don't need excel if you use this formula a is 10 and r is 0 0.5 so s infinity is 10 divided by 1 minus 0 0.5 which is 10 divided by 0 0.5 which is 10 divided by half so 10 if you without even calculating you can understand 10 if you divide into halves you get 20 so s infinity is 20 okay so now let us come back to the question the question i have copied and pasted again here so here we have got the sum of first five terms the sum of first five terms is 781 okay now okay so i've given a first written the formula okay so these are the two formulas that we need to know s this is the s n formula which is the sum of n terms s n can be found by using this formula which is a times 1 minus r to the power n over 1 minus r and this is not s n this is s infinity s infinity okay so what is given this is given s phi is 781 s infinity is 1024 and sn is greater than 1000 and we want to find n so for which value of n would sn become greater than 1000 okay so we have to do a little bit of algebra here so s phi is 781 that's given so i'm going to put n is phi i hope you can see n is phi so I've used in place of n, I put phi. So it is a times 1 minus r to the power of phi over 1 minus r is 781. Okay, the second thing is given is s infinity is 1024. So using this formula, I just use the formula of s infinity. Okay, you can see this s infinity formula. So a over 1 minus r is 1024. So this is equation 1 and this is equation two okay so what are we going to do with these two equations so let me drop down so we want to make a the subject we want to make a the subject in this equation and this equation so if you make a the subject you can cross multiply and your a so let me scroll down a little so i hope you can see this a is cross multiplying so this is this goes up and this comes down Okay, so this is 781 times 1 minus r over, this will drop down, 1 minus r to the power of 5. And making a the subject here, I can write a is equal to 1024 times 1 minus r. Okay, so now what are, what are we saying? That a is this and a is this. So if a is this, and a is this you can say this is equal to this these two are should be equal and that's what i've done logically so this should be equal to this okay we're almost there so now we're going to divide both sides by one minus r so this and this gets cancelled so what is remaining so let me scroll up a little so can you see 781 over one minus r to the power of five is 1024 and again cross multiplying and making this the subject okay first i have cross multiplied so 781 is 1024 times this and then uh, dividing both side by 1024 so if i divide this side by 1024 i can divide i should divide this side also by 1024 Okay, so what happens is 781 over 1024 is 1 minus r to the power of 5. And then taking away, I hope you can understand the manipulation. If you want to do one step here, this implies, uh, what can I do? I'm adding 
Okay, I hope you understand this. This implies 1 minus r to the power of 5 is 781 over 1024. Okay, and then you can take this to this side and this to this side. Okay, so r to the power of 5 is 1 minus 781 over 1024. So let me show this on a calculator. So if you go 1 minus 781 divided by 1024 gives you this huge number 0 0.237 I, I haven't written all the numbers okay so and then if you go r you have to find the fifth root of this side if you find the fifth root of this side if you had it if you find the fifth root of this side you have to also take the fifth root of this side so again i use the calculator so i can go fifth root like this if I shift this key, this is called the caret key, fifth root of answer will give you 0 0.75. Okay, so fifth root of answer is 0 0.75. So the common ratio is 0 0.75. Okay, so let me find A now. So we know from 2 that 1024 is A over 1 minus R. Okay. So I know R is 0 0.75, so in place of R, I can put 0 0.75. And then, so let me remove the wheel now, it's almost there. So we can say 1024 is A divided by 0.25, okay. And now cross multiplying, 1024 times 0 0.25 is equal to A. And 1024, so let me show that on a calculator, 1024 times 0 0.25 gives me 256. So your starting number is A, and your common ratio is 1000. This is A. These are the two vital information we need for geometric sequence. So now the question is, for which N would your sum be greater than 1000? Okay, so that's your question. So what I've done is I've let, so let me say, to answer this, I've let equal to 1,000. So my question is, when would the sum become exactly 1,000? So I've used the SN formula, which is A times 1 minus R to the power N over 1 minus R, and that is equal to 1,000. Okay. So now we know A, which is 256, and we know R, which is 0 0.75. So I just substituted those two values and done a little bit of manipulation. So this is one takeaway 0.75 is 0.25. Okay, and then cross multiplying both uh, or multiplying both sides by 0.25, I get this. And then this is 0.25 times 1000 is 250. So nothing happened here and dividing both sides by 256. So if you divide this side by 256, you can divide this side by 256. So 1 minus 0.75 to the power n is this. And then, of course, you're moving this to this side and this to this side. So 0 0.75 is 1 minus this. Okay. And then, so let me show that on a calculator. 1 minus 250 divided by 256 which is this huge number, 0 0.0234375. And now to find n, you have to take log of both sides. So log of 0.75 to the power n is log of this number. And using the log rule, it's n log 0.75 is log of this. So dividing both sides by log 0.75, we get n is equal to 13. Point so we can say when n is 13.04, whatever that number is, this implies Sn would be exactly 1000. Now our question is you cannot have n to be a decimal number. But our question is also not exactly. We want to find when S, when is Sn becoming greater than 1000. So using your logic, if when n is 13.04, Sn is 1000. So when n is 14, when n is 14, the Sn would become 
greater than 1000. I'll show this on Excel. You can do the same problem on Excel. So as I told you, your A is 256. At this number, what I've done is, if you can see the formula here, this is this number times 0.75. So can you see this number is getting smaller and smaller? So in other words, this is 25% less than this 0.75, I hope you understand, when your, when your common ratio is 0 0.25, 0 0.75, the numbers are decreasing by 25%. So this, this takeaway 25% is 192. Okay, you can check that. Or this times 75% of 192 is 75% of 256. So there is a reduction of 25%. So can you see? this number is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller so and if it, this is smaller and smaller and smaller and here i have added them so this is if you see this formula so this is this plus this this plus this gives you this so if this is this plus this and if you keep on so you can you see it's approaching uh i have gone only up to 13 at 13, when it is 13, it is 999.67256. And when it is 14, it is over 1,000. So if you want to say, see, it is approaching. So let me drag this and say, let me go up to. And uh, let me show you that it's approaching 1,024. So let me drag this down. So it's approaching 1024 when it approaches infinity.